Hypopituitarism is defined as decreased secretion of one or more hormones produced by the pituitary gland. This could occur due to any lesion which destroys the pituitary gland or hypothalamus or which interferes with the delivery of releasing and inhibiting factors. There could be decreased secretion of one specific hormone, which is called selective hypopituitarism, or there could be decreased secretion of most or all hormones, which is referred to as panhypopituitarism. Hypopituitarism can occur due to multiple reasons such as trauma, radiation, surgery, infections, or hypoxia. But pituitary adenomas are the most common cause of panhypopituitarism. The mass compresses the gland, causing pressure, trauma, and necrosis. Another cause is pituitary apoplexy, which is a syndrome associated with acute hemorrhagic infarction of a pre existing pituitary adenoma. It manifests as headaches, nausea, vomiting, and loss of consciousness. It is a medical and neurosurgical emergency. Inflammatory diseases can lead to hypopituitarism. These include granulomatous diseases such as sarcoidosis and TB, eosinophilic granulomas, and autoimmune lymphocytic hypophysitis, which is basically pituitary dysfunction associated with autoimmune diseases such as Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Vascular diseases such as Sheehan's postpartum necrosis may induce the state 2. In addition, stroke can cause central diabetes insipidus due to damage of hypothalamus and or the posterior pituitary. Clinical findings of hypopituitarism depend on which hormone is deficient or absent. Here, we will state the hormones in the order in which they are lost. Gonadotropin deficiency is typically the first to occur. In women, it leads to amenorrhea, genital atrophy, infertility, decreased libido, and loss of axillary and pubic hair. In men, gonadotropin deficiency results in impotence, testicular atrophy, decreased libido, and infertility. Growth hormone deficiency occurs next, and it is not clinically detectable in adults. Growth hormone deficiency causes an asymptomatic increase in lipid levels and a decrease in muscle and bone mass. It may accelerate atherosclerosis and increase visceral obesity. In children, growth hormone deficiency results in growth failure and short stature. Thyroid stimulating hormone deficiency results in hypothyroidism with fatigue, weakness, cold intolerance, puffy skin, and hyperlipidemia. Adrenocorticotropic hormone deficiency occurs last and results in secondary adrenal insufficiency. There is decreased cortisol, which results in fatigue, decreased appetite, weight loss, and decreased skin and nipple pigment. It is to be noted here that adrenocorticotropic hormone deficiency does not result in salt wasting, hyperkalemia, or death, which are associated with aldosterone deficiency. The first step in diagnosing pituitary insufficiency is to measure individual hormone levels. To diagnose growth hormone deficiency, the most reliable stimulus is insulin-induced hypoglycemia. After injecting 0.1 units per kilogram of regular insulin, blood glucose declines to less than 40 mg per deciliter if growth hormone is deficient. Whereas in normal conditions, growth hormone levels rise to greater than 10 mg per deciliter and antagonize the actions of insulin. Arginine infusions can also stimulate growth hormone secretion. This is less dangerous since it doesn't cause hypoglycemia. The insulin tolerance test is diagnostic for adrenocorticotropic hormone deficiency, and it involves giving 0.05 to 0.1 units per kilogram of regular insulin and measuring serum cortisol. Normally, plasma levels should increase to greater than 19 mg per deciliter. Metyrapone is a steroid 11-beta monooxygenase inhibitor, which tests for decreased ACTH production. Metyrapone blocks cortisol production, which should increase ACTH levels. A failure of ACTH levels to rise after giving metyrapone indicates pituitary insufficiency. If pituitary insufficiency has led to adrenal atrophy, then ACTH stimulation may give abnormally low cortisol output. To diagnose gonadotropin deficiency in women, we measure LH, FSH, and estrogen, and in men, we measure LH, FSH, and testosterone. To diagnose TSH deficiency, we measure serum thyroxine, 
free triiodothyronine and TSH levels. T4 and free T3 levels are usually low, whereas TSH is normal to low. Moving on to the management, management of hypopituitarism involves treating the underlying cause. Surgery is indicated in case of pituitary adenomas. Hormone replacement therapy may also be required.